Hi, Carol here. Warm welcome to my craft room. And I took the challenge from Wow Art. And I'm going to leave the description of where to find the channel, which I'm sure most of you know is very well known on YouTube. And I found this uh, the day before yesterday and thought, yeah, I'm going to try this. So I took a canvas. I put gesso on the front because I wasn't sure whether this canvas had gesso previously. So I just took my gesso, went over it, and took all the little pieces, parts out <laughs> that ended up getting onto the gessoed surface. And like I said, I started it at supper time and did a little bit of the work and then just before I went to bed I finished it up and I just want to show you that I love a good challenge and I, I do enjoy to paint and nothing that I am using here if you like to paint you probably have it in your craft room already so let's get going here I dried it with my heat tool and I was super excited to see if I could paint something that reasonably looked like WOW Arts <laughs> painting, <laughs> reasonably. And so I used uh, Liquitex small uh, little acrylic paint tubes here. I have a golden white and a golden black artist grade uh, paint, but I that's the only ones I use. I have a two inch painter's uh, tape that's going to go around the canvas. This is, I'm almost following this Barbatum because wow art, uh, that's amazing that he does these videos in 15 to 20 minutes he does these paintings and I was just so curious to see how long it would take me to do one with the supplies that I had and I had just watched the tutorial and I thought I'm going to give it a go. And I'm going to share it with you because I do believe that this is at the beginner level because I'm a beginner. And um, let's just go at her. So we've got it just so we have it covered with our painter's tape. Now I'm going to put a little daub of the orange. I'm not sure. I have the colors up there. The deep yellow and then a lighter yellow and then a white daub on here. I tried to really follow but I, I couldn't tell what brushes he used so I'm going to tell you what brushes I decided to use. And this is a Filbert and I think it's, a, no, this is going to crack you up. I have a ton of uh, products that are made to put your paint on, like painter's trays. <laughs> I grabbed a paper towel. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it and I thought nothing of it as I'm painting. I thought, oh, I need something to put these paints on. So I looked around and I found my paper roll and I thought, well, that's good. I'll put some paper towel out. I This is just crazy, especially because I have a lot of trays and you could put it just on your craft surface. Uh, I don't recommend a paper towel. But, it, I mean, it did serve the purpose. You can't get any beginner, beginner than me putting a paper towel out to hold my paints. Is that crazy or what? And I kept just pulling it out from underneath the canvas. Ah, so let's go with that, my friends. That's This is the way I'm rolling. And so I started with the deep orange on the bottom. This is white and rose mixed together for the bottom portion. And he did a line like this and uh, just putting some white to lighten it up. And I sped it up because I think it took me, well, I stopped and started again. So I really can't say exactly, you know, what it took me. But here I'm using a flat filbert here, probably half an inch, uh, I would say. Could be a one inch. I'm not too sure here, but I was following uh, his tutorial on my screen and trying to, you know, keep up and stop the video and then try to make the background as um, close to how uh, Wow Art was uh, painting. So that's what I did here. 
except for he didn't use a paper towel. Here's orange and burnt umber. And it's been a long time since I did an acrylic painting. It really has. And I so needed some relaxation. And this is super relaxation. If you just, it, just give it a go. And he really does make it. Uh, I'm just changing my water there. He makes it at beginner level. So you're not intimidated by what you're doing. And I was super duper happy with the outcome. I'm sticking with the half inch filbert, I'm pretty sure. I had to go around my craft room to, I had my paints all in one case, but this is the case you get 72 paints in a, in a container at Michael's. So I bought this some time ago, so some of them were pretty separated in the color. It's kind of like mashed potatoes and oil, but I worked it, I worked it, and uh, so what I have is like a tree background. I just pushed up the paint. Now I am using Tim Holtz, two of Tim Holtz products here later on. The sponge and the flat brush, the one and a quarter inch flat brush. So when I get there, I just went to another smaller filbert here and I mixed up the, the blue... I don't know if it's Payne's Gray. I'm not sure what I said there before this, but I put it up on the screen. And it's kind of like the stability of land right there where I'm going to put a little cabin. Now, uh, the trees, this was a winter scene, and I lived up north for quite a bit of my life. I mean, up north in Canada, the northern country, right in the bushes. And I know the beauty of northern skies, the northern lights, the, the snow, snow, and more snow. That's what we lived in. And um, yeah, so I only changed up a few of the trees, two of them, I made into birch trees. And the rest of them, because you know, because you know I love birch trees, I love to draw them in anything, whether it be watercolor or acrylics or pencil or charcoal, whatever. I love birch trees. And then, of course, our nice winter evergreens and, uh, you know, our winter trees. That's what I'll call them. And so now I'm just taking a darker color. <clears throat> Excuse me. It could be any, you know, the burnt umber with some uh, dark blue or orange together, you know, to make it dark here. And I'm just pushing up the um, detail brush to make some tree trunks. And you can't get any easier than this. You're, you've got the background pushed up with your thicker brush, paintbrush. Now you're taking your detail brush and you're making some tree trunks. How cool is this? And you can, if you want them thicker, bring your brush down. If you want them nice and thin, pull your brush from the bottom up. That's what works for me. And uh, this paper towel is working pretty good too, don't you think? <laughs> now, you could use a, a beautiful fan brush here. would have worked perfectly. But he didn't use a fan brush on this. So I am just taking my detail brush and I am just crisscrossing, you know, uh, what it would look like to have some evergreen trees here. Easy peasy, you can just go back and forth and loop them because we're going to add, this is just the background of these evergreen trees. You don't have to worry that you have perfection with this. You are going to put snow, you're going to put shadow, and this is just giving you a base of which trees are going to be pushed to the back and which ones will be in the forefront of this painting. Now you're getting my view of a beginner view of acrylic painting. I, I enjoy taking out my acrylics the odd time because most of the time I am making cards and on my card channel and you know paper crafts but I certainly love pan pastels. I, I've done a couple of tutorials using those and I love to color just in general. And so this was so relaxing before I went to bed. I just thought, I'll take that challenge. Well, art 
and thank you very much for putting it out there. There's a lot of work goes into this and he certainly has a lot of tutorials up to challenge us to just get out a paintbrush or two or three, some paints, and they don't have to be expensive paints at all because I'm not using expensive paints and I'm using a paper towel to put them down, sopping up all that color. <laughs> I do end up changing up later. I really do. So let's get a close-up. I am using some uh, deep blue here. Uh, I'm not even sure what color because I don't have them in front of me, but a deep blue. Uh, and I am just tapping out the trees I want to be in the forefront. So I'm making it this beautiful blue color. Now, I'm going to leave his video up in the description box, so you're going to get all the colors he used up in the upper right-hand corner. That's where he puts the colors. And here I'm taking some of my white. Now, I had to use, I used, uh, um, oh, a real cheap white at first. I mixed some of it with my golden artist grade white just because I'm running out and I didn't have much to squeeze out of the tube. But I actually went to my white acrylic uh, tube of medium texture paste and I actually put that in the mixture here so that I could stretch my white out. Well, it's not white out, but it stretched my white out, yes. So here I'm trying to get a view of having snow on my beautiful evergreen trees that are to the forefront. Now I'm just going to plop a bunch of blue color twisting my Filbert quarter inch flat brush in all directions. I'm just turning it as I'm tapping it. And I think you can see that, uh, like I said, this is a mixture of light blue and white. So we haven't got into the white, white stage of putting the snow down. So you know the bottom of your trees are going to be thicker and fuller and the top is going to be thin. And uh, I think the key to this is truly feeling relaxed, feeling like you don't have, you're not competing in uh, some competition for your artwork. What I'm doing is truly relaxing. I did need, I had just put a tutorial up on a card that I did, my uh, floating heart card that I just put up yesterday. Thank you so much if you viewed that. And I thought, you know what, I want to take on something just a little relaxing. I wasn't even going to put it on YouTube, actually. I did turn on the camera and... I wasn't sure whether I was going to put this out, but I did want to say that if you're a beginner, this is the painting for you. There's no complication in it whatsoever. You just take what brushes you do have and work with it. And I think you are going to truly love the process of this. And uh, my dog next door is starting to bark, so I may have to come off and wait until they put them inside. <laughs> I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. So here we are. We're just going to put, I think it's an ultramarine blue that I am using here and mixing it with some white. And I'm going to lighten it up and then I'm going to take it and actually use the white um, after I put this light blue on. I'm trying to put some of the, uh, the with the filbert flat brush I'm just making some of the blue trunks in the forefront just and a few of them in the background and I love the idea of having the back of these trees uh, blue you know in a dark color it really does bring everything alive in this painting and I love using the blues with the contrast of the orange and burnt umber even with the pink and white back there, I think it's just lovely. So just choose the trees you want to have in the forefront of your painting. And uh, tap, tap, tap the colors on. You could go into all kinds and shades of green if you wanted to here. 
but uh, pretty well this is the orange and burnt umber in the background with the ultramarine blue and white and you're you know adding deeper shades you're tapping your filbert brush because it's like any squared off paintbrush would be just fine and then I'm tapping in more of the lighter blue here we haven't gone to a full-blown white yet but it just seems to be coming together already and I tried to keep it you know I wasn't watching the camcorder necessary because I wasn't concentrating on the fact that I'm putting this up to YouTube I was more concentrating on just having a relaxed time so I apologize if sometimes it's too close or it's farther away I got right into painting this and I didn't go with an attitude of perfection because that would be absolutely impossible because I don't get enough practice in with my painting but I sure do enjoy painting I do it is super relaxing even if you think you can't paint I would go on and watch a few of wow art videos and he does make it uh, challenging and reachable you you really are going to enjoy the process of the few videos that I have watched now there look to the right here's my porcelain egg container that I bought and it was for painting <laughs> Yeah, I switched. This is orange and medium yellow mixed together. I'm um, using the Tim Holtz collage brush, the one and a quarter inch collage brush. Any brush, like I said, it doesn't have to be exact. I'm pulling in the yellow on the bottom. And this is going to be more or less the water, you know, the uh, mirrored image of the sky in water. And I tell you what. You can tell when somebody is enjoying a project, whether you're making cards, whether you're watercoloring, whether you're pretty well doing anything in the art realm and you enjoy it, you can tell. And with acrylic painting, I think the paints, they don't have to be high quality paints. I want to stress that if you have just a uh, you know a lower grade paint that's what I'm using uh, it works beautifully on a gessoed canvas and uh, I would I would challenge you to do this now this is burnt umber you can tell I didn't wait till it dried here I had a spot that I had gone over with the white and it's impossible to reach it with the burnt umber here because I didn't wait till that paint dried. On the left side it was. You can see that. And I am just pulling that orange and burnt umber mixed together and I will darken up this area. You are not going to see it. And actually, I thought it looked pretty good. It looked kind of like there was ice there. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. It is so crazy nice to... Uh, challenge yourself to get out some acrylics whatever paint brushes you have and give it a go because it is really stimulating and uh, you do feel like wow that looks like trees wow maybe that's why he calls it wow art you're just going wow I did that wow that's insane yes so you can't forget it's wow art <laughs> Yeah, and I, I'm actually, I started another project of his. I just started this afternoon, and I thought, no, I have to get this voiceover done. Isn't this a lovely, I got this at a quaint little shop in Niagara-on-the-Lake, and it's a porcelain egg container for eggs, I think. <laughs> ah, yeah, that's not funny. It's an egg container. So here we are. I have some yellow towards the bottom that I added, obviously. And now I'm squeezing out some. This is the texture paste, the white texture medium texture paste. And uh, blue, ultramarine blue. And I'm mixing together here because I had lots of the medium texture paste. So I just went across this with my, uh, my knife here. 
what do you call this thing? This is your, oh, your texture knife or something. I, I, I don't know why that just went up. But anyway, I'm going sideways on the knife with just edging down some of the paint on the edge of the knife. And I'm just uh, pulling down on the knife as I go across it if I'm using it straight up and down because you need to have it on the uh, palette knife. I told you, it always comes back. This is going to be the land in the blue. We're going to have the, it, the contrast of the trees being blue and the earth being blue. I love it. I love the texture of this. Uh, it doesn't even matter that I am not seasoned with acrylic painting. It doesn't bother me at all. If I enjoyed it, it was worth every minute of it. Now I grabbed another plastic palette knife. You can tell the shape is different. I have um, a little bit more control with a plastic uh, palette knife. I took my Filbert and I'm grabbing that same color that I had on the brush for some of the trees and yeah, I'm just making more texture and more texture. Now wait till you see this sponge, the Tim Holtz Collage Sponge. You're not going to believe how easy peasy it is to make clouds, although I didn't make clouds on this, but my next project will have the clouds, and uh, how it makes snow on the trees instantly. It's beautiful. It's almost like having your fan brush, but only in a sponge form. We're doing some shrubbery up next to the water. We already pulled down the burnt umber and orange from the two-thirds up down into the water there, you know, working in the rule of thirds. And, uh, yeah, that, that's just, that's uh, acrylic lingo I'm getting down here. <laughs> the rule of thirds, yes, we all know that. And I'm pushing up some shrubs here and there. You could use a detail brush instead of a filbert, but either one will work. I'm putting in my birch trees now. Now, I have to apologize right at the beginning. I didn't pull out the camera when I was sponging on the top of the birch trees. But I think you will get the gist of it just from the way I use the sponge on the other trees. And I'm just making the trunks here, pushing out some shrubberies underneath. You know with birch trees, you just take a beautiful white. And, um, oh, I already put my uh, oblong little uh, cabin here uh, with my filbert brush in, in the dark, dark burnt umber. And now I am going, oh, I made a little bit of a mess there, but that's okay. I'll go in with some burnt umber. Here, I'm taking the white that's on my uh, palette knife. This is more flexible, the plastic palette knives. And I am, yeah, I just scraped the white, white off of the woof. <laughs> the white woof. I'm adding a little bit more deep burnt umber. And I'm going to thicken the bottom of my trunks there. And then I'm going to add the side of the palette knife with white and just flick it back and forth so it looks like a birch tree on the trunk. You know, you've got that birch white and deep black brown color. Now uh, with the white I'm putting on, uh, and this works well with the filbert. This is like a quarter inch. Uh, could be uh, a little smaller. I, I didn't look at it. It could be a number four. Um, that just comes to play. I had different brushes. I had short brushes and then I had the longer brushes. I was just grabbing whatever worked. I put a yellow door on the front here and the yellow window underneath the woof. <laughs> I don't know why I always want to say a woof. Uh, but, you know, I guess it's your saying white and roof comes out a woof. Uh, with the white already on my filbert brush, I'm going, you know, on each side of my birch tree bark and I am super duper enjoying the process of this challenge video. And the video will go up in my description so you can see it and give it a try. I, I'm sure everybody but myself saw these on YouTube. I don't get on YouTube very much to watch 
different videos. Although I have a YouTube channel, I find if you have a YouTube channel, you're always, you know, concentrating on edits and voiceovers and I don't get as much time viewing other things that I would like to view. And this came up in my feed, the wow art, and I took on the challenge. So here we go. This is the best part is tearing off the painter's tape and seeing that crisp, beautiful edge. As long as I don't knock it down and get it all yucky, I am fine. And I was, I really was satisfied with this. Uh, painting and you know my husband liked it and that always means a great deal to me if he looks at it and, and he says wow you did that that's all that's worth it to me so uh, he that's what he said wow you did that of course I did it <laughs> there's you and me in the house you didn't do it so that eliminates one of us yeah I'm being a smart aleck Anywho, I love my little cabin down there. Even if you left these, yeah, I got a little bit of paint on there from the paintbrush. I'm not being careful on the side, but it came off and I was okay. Now I'm going to work from the bottom and pull that edge up. And you know what I liked about this, my friends? I love the idea of making my birch trees after I took the tape off and it goes off to the white that was so neat yes so here we go I grabbed the lid off of a painters um, this is a plastic painters thingy oh why am I turning the lights out you know why I was taking a break to make dinner and then I was coming back up to finish my birch trees I'm pretty sure because you're gonna see me in my jammy juice right after the lights go back on right here here we go. I'm back. Yes, I hung my brushes to dry upside down into my uh, hanger brushier thingy up there next to the paint well the, that I have to the right. And now this is so funny. My paint was so thick. Look at me. It's like I'm chopping some Chinese food. That's what I had that night for dinner. That's probably what's on my mind. And I'm trying to get those mashed potato clumps to all work into my, that's Appleberry White, inexpensive dollar store where nothing's a dollar white paint. And then I put some of my good paint white in there. And now I have to mix them together to get some kind of a medium base. There it is, Appleberry White from my dollar store where nothing's a dollar. And uh, my white. It was all white. It worked for me. And then I am going to just find a place for this and finish it before I went to bed. It was quite late, but, you know, now I need my snow. I'm getting all situated. Okay, let's get some snow on them trees. If you live in the north, whoa. And another thing that's really, uh, I don't think people think of when you're drawing trees, at least uh, if you don't live in the north and you're not familiar with the tall evergreens and uh, the tall trees. I'm whitening up the roof, the my roof, and then I'll go in uh, putting white snow on the ground and into my trees. But when the trees are tall, they hit the sun much sooner than at the bottom. And so the tips of your trees in the north anyway, they don't have snow on them like at the very, very peaks because the sun has hit that and it's melted them down. So if you see some of my trees, I intentionally left the top, some of them, without having the white, white snow on it. Now, here we go. I'm just, uh, this could be a round. This could be a number 10 round or a number 6. I can't remember what I used here. But you see how I'm, uh, once the brush is, oh, it might be a filbert. Once the brush is empty, I go to the back trees because they won't be as uh, luminous as the front. So uh, as you see here, this is my favorite tree, I think. Is this my favorite tree? One of these, the way the snow was situated was just like using a fan brush. It looks so pretty, but I wasn't. I was using a filbert right here. I'm going to add snow in front of the cabin. 
I'm going to use it, uh, you know, um, on the out outline edges right here on the upper two thirds, and just lightly, like a dry brush uh, motion. Oh yeah, dry brush motion, and um, it's that tree beside the really white tree that ends up being so crazy pretty. It was almost like I could reach out and knock the snow off. Here I'm making some bunny burrows. That was my thought right here when I was putting the snow there. And some little bunnies are living in there, as Mr. Bob Ross would say. You have to make room for your little bunnies and all your creatures uh, in the snow and in the sky. Yes, in the trees. There's all little creatures. So here I think, let me see which tree, I love the blue one right next to that white one I just did. I love it when I enjoy what I do, don't you? It doesn't matter if the tree isn't exact, if you love what you're doing. As long as it has a trunk on it and it has some things, look at just dot, 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 dot. I think this is a round, as you can see. I'm just dotting the snow, making it thick on the bottom. I hope I get thicker there. I don't know if I do, but um, and each tree is individual. This is a deep, deeper dumper I am putting on here. I want to get the motion of that tree. I want to get the fullness of a trunk underneath there. So now I have my greens, my mossy green and white mixed together. And with the deep, deep burnt umber, you can see at the tops, they are, they don't have a lot of snow on them, okay? In the background, in the background, not my blue foreground ones, but the background. Now I'm tapping some of these in, and I'm tired, and it's late, and I don't care. I loved this process. Wow, Art, thank you. And uh, this, every painting you do, my friends, is a uh, extension of yourself. This is a Carol Held extension of the way I think and the way I color. It is not going to be identical to somebody else's because I'm not using their brain or the thought, you know. Um, it's just my own you know, thoughts going into color on a canvas. And that's what I love about other people's art. It is an extension of themselves that I see when I'm viewing the process. So you don't have to be uh, a truly, you know, uh, famed artist to get satisfaction out of painting. That's all I'm trying to say here. Here's some green shrubbery in front of my trees that I'm putting on there. I will brush them down into the water so we get the same color reflection. I'm going to put some in the trees because they will be covered again with snow, as you will see in a little bit. And um, yeah, so there's really... I'm going back to the dark burnt umber here because I wanted to darken up uh, the front. I wanted to make it a furry, furry tree. That was my thought process here. And, uh, you know, each of these little bushes and each of these trees are unique to themselves, aren't they? They're just uh, your rendition of a tree, uh, plural. A whole bunch of trees. And I love, 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 love the little rocks and the little uh, ice caps in the on the lake there right in front of us. I love the reflection by just flicking that old brush down to get some fan feathered look to look like it's reflecting off the water. I love the pink in the beautiful northern sky. Um... I love my little cabin seated right in the back with my two big birch trees, my rocks. Uh, here I am just adding some fresh greenery and I'll do the tips of them dark and uh, with whatever brush you have, just tap, tap, tap straight on and you will get some beautiful texture as I am doing right there. And can, you know, I don't know, I'm just really thankful that I get to share 
this with you and I'm thankful that I was able to do this channel challenge that I had some supplies uh, available and uh, we're just going to enjoy it and keep going and the beauty really my friends of not you know if you make a mistake you just cover it up with some more paint you know if it was a mistake on a small tree tree make it a large tree uh, yeah there's really no worries when you're doing this. Now here, I'm going sideways on my filbert brush, and this is the tree I loved. I drug the snow down just a bit when I was tap. No, this is the tree I like, the side-by-side -side tree. Yes, where I'm hitting it and tapping it uh, in different places, making some of the tree, and you can see I'm pulling down on the filbert brush. To make it look like the snow is hanging down. That's my favorite tree right there. I love that tree. Don't you? I really do. With the two dark trees on either side. Oof. Yes. Just looking at it, it makes me happy. Nature is beautiful, isn't it? Everything about the north to me is beautiful. And uh, we used to have a log cabin right up on a lake. And this is so reminiscent of that time in our lives. And uh, here I'm, oh, okay, I'm working, I'm so sorry, on my birch trees. And then when I came in, you'll see it with the pictures at the end. I took that uh, sponge brush, the collage Tim Holtz sponge brush. It's like a sea sponge. And I just took three different colors, a white, uh, 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 dark blue and um, greens and I just tapped it with that sea sponge that collage sponge onto the top and when I pull back the camera and when you get a view of the final pictures you will right there see that sponge you're just going to color whatever leaves uh, make your stems go out and darken it up and lighten it up with your snow. And truly, these two birch trees looked gorgeous just using the sponge. I was able to get the texture I needed on all my bushes. I was able to get snow on my trees. I was able to push the darker trees back with the edges of the sea sponge and it, it just worked for me. I had it in my stash and uh, it was still in the package. I I think I have a couple of them and this one uh, was the newer one and I thought it's so soft and it's so, I don't know, it's so light and airy. It just adds that light and airy feeling that was so wonderful. Uh, in my little painting, you know, and it was, uh, I think it was a 12 by, let me see, 16 inch. It was 16 inches across and maybe uh, 10, 12 by 16 maybe? I can't remember. But here I am going in with the sponge and getting those little wee uh, twigs, you know, the little twigs. There it is. I added some dark. You can see I'm just using the sides of it just touching the dark into the tree and doesn't it make that beautiful evergreen in the center look gorgeous i could just picture those stems just tilting down with the weight of that beautiful snow and just gleaning that sunshine and the tips of the trees just melting with the snow and the wonder of the glass lake there. It doesn't have to be blue, my friends. And here I'm taking quite a bit of the white to add to the one tree, but I will go in and darken that. Here I just want the illusion of some little dots going on, of twigs and branches, broken branches. I go back to my two um, trees that I love, love, love to paint here. I'm getting darker on the top where the sun hits the trees and you don't have as much snow on the peaks. And then I'm coming into my little bushes and my rocks and my uh, land 
that has the blue back and forth textured ground the earth. I will go back with all kinds of light blue, dark blue, light green, dark green, burnt umber, and uh, aquamarine blue, and I'll put it on my sponge and tap, tap, tap to the upper right. You'll see that. And I will do a birch tree on my next little painting. My next little painting is a much quicker painting, but I think you'll truly enjoy the process with me. It's a smaller flat canvas, and I was challenged to do another picture of how to make clouds and birch trees, and I'm going to incorporate them together on a canvas. I'm so excited, and it does not take a long time. It's not hours and hours and hours. I really do think it took me more time to clean the products after I was finished than it did the actual painting. I want to get a reflection of that tap, tap, tap snow in the water. So that's why I was adding that ever so lightly. With this sea sponge, you don't press it heavy. Uh, you just literally, just as soon as you feel that canvas, you release the pressure. And oh my, it just... I don't know. It was the perfect tool, the perfect sponge for what I was doing. I darkened it up with some deep, deep uh, brown and blue in the trees so that the snow underneath the trees was missing. I wanted to get that effect. And on this one, you can see I went in with more green. I wanted to tilt it towards the right. So I was able to get that effect by just tapping more to the right. And uh, basically, this is my fresh and airy northern sea. This is what I saw, my seesaw. This is what I saw when I viewed the WOW art video. This is my version of a cabin up north and a little bit of the northern lights going on there behind us. Not truly. Uh, northern lights are more like uh, flashing lightning, but the lightning is in all different shades of color. It's absolutely beautiful, mesmerizing. If you've ever viewed, had the blessing of viewing the northern lights, it is uh, truly a work of art. You know, our, the Lord just had his hand in the northern lights, in everything, of course. And, um, yeah, so I'm super duper happy. Thank you for very much for joining me for my challenge today. I appreciate that. I'm going to keep tapping into my uh, trees. Now, the one tree that has a ton of snow on it, beside my favorite tree right there, um, I end up getting an ink brush. This is an ink brush, and it's black. And I want to deepen underneath that tree. And I didn't have any black paint at hand uh, because I think I put them away and I had my black ink calligraphy uh, pen handy. So that's how I deepened this up. It's not all acrylics. I did use uh, black India ink in my tree. And we are closing down, my friends. The only thing I changed here, I think, as we're coming up to the end, is I added more snow in front of my cabin. That way it brought the, the small cabin out that you could see it. And I wanted to add just a little bit more of the texture so you could see the texture right in front of the cabin, how much snow. Because the roof, my little roof, has quite a bit of snow on it. So I wanted to get that kind of illusion there of having more so I grabbed my Tim Holtz one and a quarter inch collage brush and I just went over the texture that I had already put into place in the blue. I will tap it a little bit in the water, just pushing it out so I had some white texture when you looked at it. And I'm going to add, um, you know, probably round that, yes, just round it a little bit on the uh, earth that's outside the cabin and yes I am pretty well finished thank you for subscribing thank you for liking and 
all the things that we do if we appreciate a video that we've seen. I'll leave the link of Wow Art. Have yourself a blessed week as always. And uh, I sure appreciated spending this time with you. I'm pulling it out now. That tree, my birch, two birch trees, the trunks are pretty close together. And I pounced down with the sea foam sponge. Just uh, three or four different shades of blue. I'm starting to turn the lights out. And I was just happy. Oh, I had to do a few little things. I don't know what it is right there, but I felt it. Oh, I added a little bit of snow onto my India ink. That tree that I darkened up, I just took that and added a bit. Now the lights are growing dim and I am getting ready to hit the hay, as they say. I guess I'm not. Oh, some more bark. Some more white bark on my birch tree. Don't you love birch trees for that? Doesn't it stand out because I have the texture there already from the um, burnt umber. And uh, it's just, and the tree really is about 15 pounces of the uh, sponge and putting it on the tree. Just dark to light. And in no time, I was able to complete this challenge, you know, and share the process with you. And so I'm going to uh, challenge you to give one of these WOW Art videos a try. I do believe it'll be relaxing and you will totally enjoy the process. So take care, my friends. I will see you on the next tutorial. Bye now.